Seconds to Midnight is a collection that charts the history of climate change and environmentalism. It spans over 2,000 years of thought on weather and human impact on it. And it covers books, manuscripts, letters, and visual material that charts both our recording of data and also our emotional response to it. Climate change is the biggest issue of our time, and nobody had made a collection on climate change. It's not been done before. It's a very urgent position to be in, and that's why we think this collection is so important uh, for the present moment. The collection features more than 800 works from the 15th century to the present day, reflecting our curiosity and fear, action and inaction. And it's fascinating to see how key individuals came to realize our role in changing the world's climate. The title of the collection is a reference to the Doomsday Clock, a symbol which registers how close we are to a worldwide catastrophe. The clock hands are currently set to 100 seconds to midnight, which is the closest to midnight we've ever been. So Peter Harrington is the leading rare book dealer in the UK. And that means original editions, first editions, autograph, manuscripts. We were looking for a new concept of a collection, something that's not been done before. Urgency is there, we're seeing it all around us in the news, the impact of climate change. No one's done a comprehensive collection from the scientific arguments to the general observations. You could display this in any museum around the world relevant to science. It would visually display beautifully. From the first weather forecasts printed over 500 years ago, to the earliest uses of fossil fuels in the Industrial Revolution, the collection represents all the major figures in climate science. And then we bring the collection right through to the 20th century with one of the most iconic of all human images. Earthrise, the photograph taken on the Apollo 8 NASA mission. Apollo 8, uh, Houston. Boy, there are no shadows in those craters down there. Are we doing this other dollar point? It was an idea that we had a few years ago to put together a collection that charted the history of climate change and environmentalism. And we were lucky enough to work with a really distinguished American collector called David Wenner, who put together this amazing collection of predominantly 19th and 20th century climate science. And that really sits as the core of this collection. And what we've done is extended it before and after that point in history. It tries to depict the entire uh, scientific development from beginning to end. And in fact, a scientific development is a series of, of, of uh, individual and collective uh, editions. I'm really glad that Peter Harrington bought my collection and is putting together a larger collection, including their contributions, because they're looking at it through a different lens than I am. I'm, I'm looking at it from the scientific lens totally, and they are thinking about what about philosophy? What about art? How does it all relate to this? And they're putting together a bigger collection that includes those sorts of things that really were not part of mine. I think it's a real improvement. So Dave has that very rare sort of dual set of skills, and it's of a collector and of a scientist. And he has put together a complete scientific argument. The detailed knowledge and the reading and the research required to build that kind of collection is extraordinary. You not only have to read a lot about it, but you have to read the source documents themselves and see who they cite and how they cite these people. And then you have to go find their documents and do that over and over again until you get back to the beginning. And so in doing all of that, over a period of time, you develop the perspective of which of these are important and which aren't. They go on your want list and you search for them until you find them. 
the quality of the books is amazingly good. I mean, really surprisingly good all the way through. And, and, and I can pick out an object like this. You know, this is a 15th century book, one of the first ones discussing climate change and talking about weather observations. And it goes back to Italy, printed in 1485. The production of these things were, you know, obviously handmade paper. It's only 30 years after the beginning of printing. But actually what's rather beautiful, these initials were woodcuts. And they're very beautifully done. You need to know where you were to understand where you're going. Without the printed book, we don't have records of what we knew beforehand. One of the personalities that I really loved uh, getting to know in the collection is Alexander von Humboldt, who is one of the most influential and important figures in the history of environmentalism. He produced some really key works, and Darwin, who, when he journeyed on the Beagle, uh, took uh, copies of Humboldt's books with him because they were just so influential at the time. One of the most beautiful uh, representations of Humboldt's thought is this really large, beautifully engraved folding plate from his 1807 book, and it's really the first uh, representation visually of his idea of a holistic view of nature, of the fact that everything is connected and that if you affect one thing, you affect the rest. The collection is also complemented by a very striking engraved portrait of Humboldt. One of the items that I'm particularly happy and proud to have in the collection is a paper by uh, an American scientist called Eunice Newton Foote. And she was a 19th century scientist, amateur, taught uh, a little bit at school, but she put together this very small paper based on some of her experiments with carbon dioxide. It was published in 1856, and it's really the beginning of linking carbon dioxide to heating the Earth's atmosphere. It's actually only in the last 10 years or so that she's really been rediscovered and her place in climate history has been properly identified as predating people like Tyndall and Arrhenius, who are well known to us. Um, and I think it's great that she's sort of being recognized now as one of the key figures in climate science. The phrases that we use and know so well today, things like the greenhouse effect and global warming, it's fascinating that the collection charts just how early they were first used. So for example, uh, the greenhouse effect uh, was actually first used in uh, a printed paper in 1899 uh, by a Swedish scientist called Niels Ekholm. And global warming was popularized through Wallace Broker's 1975 paper that charts how long we've known about this and how little of a reaction that we've had. The building this collection on climate change clearly makes one think about what we, how we operate as a firm. So I'm really pleased to say that when this collection finds a new home, a significant portion of this uh, sale will go to the World Land Trust. It's fantastic to see the exhibition finally set up, and this is just a taste of what the entire collection looks like. I hope the public gets a chance to see it because I think they can learn something from it. You know, science is real. You should believe in science. It takes a while, um, it has fits and starts, but it gets there. I hope it goes to an institution or to an individual who will display it or maybe an individual who will give it to an institution and it will be on display. There has not been for sale a collection that's so comprehensive. That is a unique opportunity for somebody because someone's done the work for you and this is a decade's worth of work. It is the greatest collection for sale on climate change, no question.